A lot of people have been working on this from a lot of different directions since the global environmental crisis was discovered in 1968. The discovery of the global environmental crisis was the discovery that our established way of thinking was leading us into trouble. A solution to the environmental crisis depended on our finding and establishing a new way of thinking. The discovery of the global environmental crisis predicted a global economic breakdown. The economic crisis would lead to resources being stretched thinner and thinner among people. Eventually, that would reach a point of resources not being sufficient to meet people's needs. That means at some point, people will begin to struggle against the economic breakdown. That means those people will search for a more effective way of struggling against the economic breakdown. That's what we're doing. If the environmental crisis isn't stopped, it will lead to disaster. The, defense, the definition of environmental disaster is the point of which the resources in the environment are no longer sufficient to support the living things in the environment. If the situation of resources being stretched more, thinly, more and more thinly among people was to continue to its conclusion, that would mean global famine. The definition of a famine is people not getting the resources they need to live. I want to stress here that I have done this, I, I have done in this document is not easy. The search for a unifying philosophy always runs into the limitations of the human brain. There's no way for any one person to see everything in the world in their life. The Occupy movement is made up of people who have seen many different parts of life, but no one of us has seen it all. There are parts of life that other people have seen, but none of us have. In my disclaimer, this story is not mine, it is the author's. I am just the orator. In my family, my grandparents started the search for a unifying philosophy almost 80 years ago. It depends first on people pursuing a wide variety of life experiences backed up by research into a wide variety of ideas that other people have thought of. On my dad's side of the family, we're a multiracial family. The generation after mine is roughly one-fourth white, one-fourth black, one-half Native American. I was raised on this stuff from the day I was born 37 years ago. I'm not 37. I have traveled and lived all over the United States. I have jobs and education in several different fields. I've lived in South America. I've been working at this full-time occupation for the past eight years. This just isn't a hobby for me. I agree. The Occupy is not a hobby. It should be your life. We're trying to change the world.